Benvenuti scholars. One of our most popular video lessons to date has been our video lesson on the problem space. So we thought it may be helpful to go more deeply into the problem space. I've collected another great group of my colleagues to go into this more deeply to help you get closer to graduation. So let's talk about the problem space. So the problem space is basically your argument for the need for the study. Know how to identify it and know how to articulate it. It's based on what you see in the literature. This most recently came up with me and a student when a student wanted to investigate PBIS and whether or not it was associated with higher student outcomes in a rural area in Mississippi. And when I had that conversation with the student, I said, well, we have so much literature on PBIS. We have demonstrations that PBIS is effective in large urban areas and it is effective in suburban areas. And my student even showed me a study that demonstrated that PBIS predicted higher student outcomes in rural North Carolina. So my question for her was, then why do we need to know if it would be effective in rural Mississippi. What made rural Mississippi different than rural North Carolina? And this goes to the heart of the argument. At that point, the student could not argue why we may expect something different out of rural Mississippi than rural North Carolina. Now, there may be something unique about rural Mississippi that I don't know. And if my student can pull that from the literature and demonstrate that there's a compelling reason why rural Mississippi may be different than other rural areas in the U.S. in regarding to PBIS studies, then she may be able to form that argument. A problem space is an idea that says this is why the research needs to be done. Something is not known but it needs to be known. It is not just a need of society, it is a need that is in the research. I guess the easiest example I can give is from my own study. I was very passionate about high-performing teams and Dr. Richard Hackman's model for high-performing teams. So I threw myself into the literature and sure enough, his model had been studied in business, had been studied with the military, and had been studied with athletic teams. There was plenty of research showing that those high-performing teams produced more effective outcomes. But as I continued to do the research, what I noticed was there was little to any research regarding Dr. Hackman's high-performing teams model and education. And that became the problem space for my study by finding what we knew and comparing it to what we don't know. So how do we do this? As you look at each article's recommendations and limitations, it should become clear what is similar in the articles that you've read and what is different, and what is similar with the study you're proposing to do and what is different. And it's that difference that often allows you to finely tune your problem space or your argument for your study. Make sure that you come with your problem space articles clearly identified. Make sure that you're able to tell your instructor what the researchers did, what they say needs to be done, and what you plan to do based upon their recommendations. And then you look for those future research directions or limitations from other studies that can contribute to the need for your study. Highlight those recommendations in the PDF and make sure that you're ready to discuss with your instructor during your very, very first one-on-one -on -one session. Now, in a perfect world, those recommendations would tell you exactly what to do and you would say thank you as that gift from heaven came. But that's not the real world. Really, what has to be done is you have to create a systematic, arduous task of looking at what is similar and what is dissimilar in the studies and in the study that you're shaping up. What you'll notice as you do that, that it'll become obvious that you will be creating a circle of arguments around something that is missing in the literature and needs to be explored. Unless you can get resources that can create a problem space that can synthesize 
uh, together to be able to support uh, your research endeavor, you don't have a dissertation topic uh, nor a dissertation study. Dr. Williams Demon had a great point about synthesis. If we go back to my study about high performing teams, it was clear that the literature noted that high performing teams was associated to more effective outcomes in military, but not education. Moreover, it was shown to be effective in athletics, but again, not education. It was also shown to be effective in business, but not education. So synthesizing Dr. Williams Damon's point is we are constantly juxtaposing what has been shown in the literature and what hasn't been shown and why it's needed. You're gonna show how your research is going to round out the coverage of that topic. Not based on your experience or your observation, not something that you've seen at work, it's based on what you see in the literature. It's important to note that as I did my exhaustive search of the literature and found that the research was plentiful regarding high-performing teams and corporations, military and athletics, there was no study that suggested that I should do this in the education space. It became obvious to me that it was missing. It became evident that there was a need to do this by comparing what we do about high-performing teams and what we didn't know about high-performing teams. And it goes without saying that education is a big topic in America and is important to our country's prosperity. Make sure that those problem space articles are from current literature. Make sure that they are empirical articles, that data was actually collected. You cannot get your problem space from a lit review, a meta-analysis, or a survey review, or any of those, those things. Empirical data, empirical research, empirical research. This is really important that it comes from the last five years of your dissertation publication date. Why? We count backwards from the date of graduation and we do not want your literature to be any older than five years from the date of graduation. So if you are graduating in 2024, we count backwards. 24, 23, 22, 21, 20 is the cutoff. Consider electronics and technology, geopolitical issues, health issues. How many things have changed dramatically in just the last five years? So if your literature is older than five years, it's hard to defend that your topic actually needs to be researched because things change so quickly today. So when your literature is five years or older, it creates questions and doubt as whether the problem that you're arguing really exists. Moreover, it puts into question your expertise because one of the things the research does in your literature review is it shows that you're one of the foremost experts in this space. But if there's an absence of recent literature, it calls into question how up to date are you in the literature. For example, if you were studying five years ago, the concept of remote working, I think it stands to reason that studying it today is gonna to show some different things in the literature. If you were studying distance learning in elementary ed and distance learning now in elementary ed, the literature and the environment may also be different. While you're creating the problem space with a mind to the review of literature, it's important to keep an eye on the percentages of your resources that are within five years of your graduation date. A good target is 75% or more of your references in your review of literature and your problem space should be within those five years. Some people will put this in a spreadsheet, put the dates and let it calculate it automatically. I like that tactic and it can make it easier for you in the long run. You don't wanna to get to the end and then have somebody tell you, you gotta redo this, you gotta freshen up that problem space. And as Dr. Harshman noted, it is much easier to keep track of those percentages now than have to address it at the end. It could prevent some heartache by doing the work today. Finally, Dr. Ward brings it home with a really powerful point. Wrap it all up by just adding in a couple of additional sentences that uh, 
help the reader to understand how things might look if your study were successful. If your study is successful, what does it look like and what does it do for practitioners or people in research? When I look back again at my own study regarding high performing teams, because we knew it in so many other industries but not education, it was evident to me that that problem space, if addressed, could actually offer prescriptions to leaders and policy makers. It could actually be of value to those who are in the field and to future researchers in regard to high performing teams in education. So, you want to add that point to the end of your problem space because it cinches it all together. Let me help you get to graduation. Also, don't forget to check out our Is website. it in the resources below? Yep. Is it in the resources I below? Just put it on there. Is it in the resources? Yes. Yep. Is it in the resources I just below? Put it on there. Is it in the resources? Yes. Okay. I want to thank the students that have reached out and told us that these video lessons have helped them. It means so much to us. Can I put on my pajamas again? <laughs>